Hello folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. In this second part of uh, PySpark installation for Jupyter Notebook video, I'm going to cover a remaining three steps. So stay connected till the end of this video and this series to acquire the complete knowledge. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications uh, about the hottest technologies of 21st century. Now the fourth step is to download and set up winutils.exe file, which is a Hadoop component for Windows uh, operating system. It is uh, basically used uh, for running uh, shell commands as well as accessing local files. So let's go to this uh, Hadoop binaries Gip GitHub repository and uh, choose your desired uh, Hadoop version. This is the basically page, WinUtils page, okay, where you can find all the uh, distribution versions of Hadoop, okay. So let's say we are interested in Hadoop 2.7.1. So click on this Hadoop uh, version 2.7.1 and go inside this folder. And then inside this folder, you will find these two items. One is bin folder. So let's go inside this bin folder to download the corresponding winutils.exe file. Okay. So if you scroll down a bit, you will find the winutils.exe file here. Okay. And again, I will provide the link of this particular GitHub page in the description sections. So you can either clone or uh, download this file from this page. Okay. And the next step is to uh, save this particular file to uh, or the, save this particular WinUtils files to the bin directory of your Spark installation. Okay. So if you remember from the previous video, this was the location of uh, my Spark uh, Hadoop folder and I'm inside uh this bin folder okay if you see that i have this uh, spark folder uh created inside the c drive and inside this folder we have a bin directory so you need to just copy that winutils.exe file and paste it here inside this bin folder of uh, our spark installation okay once you do that then this particular uh, step or the fourth step is complete here okay now the fifth step is to check the PySpark installation to see if it is working perfectly. So we need to open the Anaconda or any other uh, command prompt uh, supported by Python and we need to type the PySpark command in order to enter inside the PySpark shell. So let me open my uh, uh, Anaconda prompt real quick. So this is my Anaconda prompt here in front of you. So you can just type PySpark and press enter. So you should be able to see, uh, uh, you know, the output something like this uh, on your screen. If you see on the screen, you should be able to see uh, the output something like this. Okay. Now we need to type a couple of RDD uh, or the resilient distributed data uh, PySpark spark, uh, spark related commands to see if it is working fine. So let's write those commands. Uh, you can very well see that we are inside uh, the spark shell. Okay. And uh, the version we are using is 2.3.1 of this spark uh, distribution. Okay. So let's type this command uh, numeric well equals to sc dot parallelize and then we need to provide certain numbers let's just set these four numbers for the simplicity sake and then press enter now the second command we need to type is numeric well dot map and then a lambda function we need to include uh, so what this lambda function will do is uh, it will just um, uh, cube or uh, you know multiply the number with itself three times okay so we are kind of finding out the cube of a specific number so we will do x into x multiplied by x so x multiplied by x multiplied by x three times 
so 1 into 1 into 1 will become 1 2 into 2 into 2 become 8 and 3 into 3 into 3 becomes 27 and lastly 4 into 4 into 4 should become 64 all right then we will type the action statement action command called collect and then press enter so you can see that uh, some processing is happening here and we should get the desired result uh, which should be the cube of uh, the number itself so you can see very well the output is 182764 because we are multiplying the number with itself three times or finding out the cube of a number so this means that our PySpark installation is successful and we can move forward to run the same command in the Jupyter Notebook now to check if PySpark is integrated with uh, Jupyter Notebook or not. Uh, so you can just exit out from this PySpark shell using command exit. Okay, so you can exit out using this command. Alright, so we came out of it. Now the last and final step is to access a Spark instance from Jupyter Notebook. So first we need to install a package called find a Spark. So we will type the command uh, something like this. So here you can see the command which is conda install hyphen c conda hyphen forge find a Spark. Okay. And you need to press enter once you uh, type this command. Okay and once you enter this particular package find spark will be installed on your in your environment i have already installed this uh, package on my system so i'm kind of keeping myself refrained from installing it once again but you can install it uh, by using uh, this particular command okay now uh, we will open our jupyter notebook by clicking on the launch button of the anaconda navigator which is this particular screen okay so you need to just click on this launch button of jupyter notebook okay and once you click on it a uh, screen will be opened something like this all right so you just need to uh, this screen will be opened up and you need to click on uh, new and then on python 3 so once you click on python 3 uh, jupyter notebook will be opened so a Jupyter Notebook, a fresh Jupyter Notebook will be opened, uh, something like this. Uh, you will have a blank Jupyter Notebook. Uh, in my case, it, uh, there are certain commands which I have uh, mentioned here in order to test the PySpark installation or, uh, or to see if the integration of uh, PySpark has happened with the Jupyter Notebook or not. Okay, so once we open uh, the Jupyter Notebook, then we need to run these set of commands. Okay. So first uh, we will uh, uh, you know type these uh, set of commands where we are importing the find spark and pi spark right so we need to import these uh, in order to test the pi spark installation in the second cell i am uh, kind of instantiating the spark context using the set of commands shown here in this particular second cell okay so i first imported spark context spark conf as well as spark uh, session from uh, pyspark.sql and then utilize these three commands to basically instantiate the spark session and i kept the spark uh, application name as a spark app and uh, i mentioned local to run it in the local mode okay now we will uh, type the same commands which we typed uh, in the spark shell here okay so as you can see we type these commands these two commands in the spark shell earlier right uh, which actually nothing but uh, it, it, what it is doing is it is just uh, uh, multiplying itself by three times or uh, finding out the cube of a particular number okay so I mentioned the same commands here also and when I ran this cell I got the same output here just like here right so the same output is also uh, provided here also okay so that means uh, we can now access Spark from Jupyter Notebook, right? So this is working successfully now, all right? And we can write our own uh, Spark commands and as well as, you know, build machine learning models uh, using Spark ML lib in Jupyter Notebook. Okay, we can utilize these notebooks for the same. 
Now uh, we can stop the Spark session uh, using this sc dot stop command, and your Spark uh, once you execute this cell, then your Spark session will be uh, terminated. All right. So if you want to get the access of this particular uh, Jupyter notebook or uh, you know the uh, related uh, Python code, then uh, you can uh, go to my description uh, section and there I have provided the GitHub link for the same. I have also provided the link at the end of this video so you can just note it down from there as well. All right. So folks, this is it for this video. To conclude, I covered remaining three steps to install PySpark on Windows machines so that uh, you can run Spark specific commands and jobs from Jupyter Notebook. So let me ask you a question from today's video. Did you like this video uh, series to install PySpark on uh, Windows machine in order to uh, run Spark based commands and jobs using Jupyter Notebook? Please post your comments in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.